for watching mid-morning edition of Arirang News on this Friday, March 6th. Live from Seoul, I'm Shin Min. Before we begin, these are the stories we're following at this hour. Seoul deeply regrets Japan's sudden entry restrictions on South Koreans. This was the Prime Minister's reaction as Tokyo imposed a two-week quarantine plan for visitors from South Korea. Seoul now warns of tough corresponding measures. The World Health Organization says it sees encouraging signs coming out of South Korea in regards to the coronavirus outbreak. It also noted the number of new cases looks set to decline and that there are mostly from known clusters. European nations, including the UK, slam North Korea at the UN Security Council for the regime's latest missile launches. They also urged the North to engage in good faith negotiations with the US. We begin this newscast with the latest on the coronavirus outbreak here in South Korea. Eight nurses and patients at the Pundang Taesing Hospital south of Seoul have tested positive for COVID-19. The hospital located in Gyeonggi-do province, about 30 kilometers south of the capital Seoul, said the patient, the 76-year-old cancer patient, showed symptoms of pneumonia after being brought into the emergency room on March 1st. They subsequently ran a COVID-19 test on that patient and the results came out positive. The hospital then checked people who came into contact with the infected patient, finding another seven additional cases. The hospital has since shut down the emergency room and is not taking any new patients. According to the latest tally, the total number of confirmed patients in South Korea stands at 6,888, with the death toll at 44. The government will hold a regular briefing session and release the updated figures. South Korea has expressed extreme regret over Japan's decision to sharply toughen entry restrictions on travelers from South Korea in light of the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. The prime minister this morning said Tokyo should immediately remove the measures and that the top office is currently holding National Security Council meeting over the matter as we speak. And Seoul's foreign ministry will summon Japan's ambassador to South Korea in the coming hours to lodge an official complaint. Her Oh Jung-hee tells us more. South Korea says it extremely regrets Japan's decision to tighten entry restrictions on travelers from South Korea and is strongly urging Tokyo to change its mind. In a text message to reporters on Friday, Source Foreign Ministry said it cannot help but question whether Tokyo has other intentions instead of just quarantine because her efforts to contain COVID-19 have been well evaluated by the international community. The government says it's reviewing all possible corresponding measures. Japan had only previously denied entry to people who had visited South Korea's virus-stricken southeastern city of Daegu and Cheongdo County within the past 14 days. But during a meeting on COVID-19 on Thursday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe further strengthened the measures. Starting Monday and until the end of this month, travelers from South Korea will first have to, quote, wait at designated facilities for two weeks. It's unknown whether this waiting will mean strict isolation or a measure less severe than that. Tokyo will also expand its entry ban to those who visited seven additional areas in Gyeongsangbuk-do province, like Andong City and Gyeongsan City, on top of Daegu City and Cheongdo County. No visa entries will also be suspended until late this month. On top of that, visas already issued for South Korean and Chinese nationals will no longer be valid and flight and ferry services will be limited. According to sources, Tokyo did not notify Seoul of the new measures prior to their announcement. Seoul's foreign ministry called in Japan's number two envoy to South Korea, Hirohisa Soma, late Thursday to hear from him about what prompted the move. Seoul's first vice foreign minister, Cho tae yang will summon the Japanese ambassador to South Korea, Koji Tomita, on Friday. Oh jung Arirang News. Staying with the matter, Seoul's top diplomat will be briefing foreign missions this afternoon, highlighting the nation's efforts to contain the coronavirus outbreak. With close to 100 countries restricting entry of travelers from South Korea, Foreign Minister Kang Kyung-hwa is likely to stress that it is not the entire country that's seriously affected by the virus. 
Seoul has been explaining to other countries that it is seeing a spike in cases due to the government proactively testing 15,000 people a day. The goal of today's session is to earn the understanding of respective nations on the COVID-19 situations here in the nation and to avoid excessive entry ban on travelers from South Korea. Foreign Ministry's such session with foreign diplomats is the second such kind. Late last month, Deputy Minister for Political Affairs Kim Gun briefed the missions. South Korea's finance chief has warned the uptick in the number of countries and regions barring travelers from South Korea will limit people-to-people -people exchanges as well as trade and investment. Chairing a meeting with economy-related ministers this Friday, Finance Minister Hong nam -gi stressed that the difficulties facing South Korea are piling up and are being realized in the real economy as consumer sentiment plunges. Hong also said the government will do its utmost to provide accurate information about the nation's quarantine efforts and economic conditions to credit rating agencies as well as foreign investors to ensure faith and confidence in Asia's fourth largest economy. He also promised to take preemptive steps to deal with increased market volatility. The World Health Organization says that there are encouraging signs coming out of South Korea, where the newly reported cases appear to be on the decline. Now, the comments come as the WHO's Director General previously said South Korea was among the greatest concerns outside of China when it comes to the coronavirus. Or Lee Seung Jae with more. Earlier this week, the head of the World Health Organization named South Korea as one of four nations that are of greatest concern when it comes to the COVID-19 outbreak. However, such comments were tinged with a fresh sense of optimism on Thursday regarding the current status in South Korea. We see encouraging signs from the Republic of Korea. The number of newly reported cases appears to be declining, and the cases that are being reported are being identified primarily from known clusters. However, with other parts of the world seeing more and more confirmed cases, the Director General called on every country to act with speed, scale and clear-minded determination, saying the epidemic can be stamped down with a collective, coordinated and comprehensive approach that engages the entire machinery of government. The WHO chief also raised concerns that some countries have not taken the current outbreak seriously enough or have even decided there's nothing that can be done. He stressed the outbreak is not a drill. He warned the worldwide COVID-19 outbreak doesn't just threaten countries with weaker health systems, but even high-income countries should expect surprises. Lee seung -jae, Arirang News. The coronavirus continues to spread across the globe. Western countries, including the UK and the US, are also starting to face an uphill battle to contain the outbreak within their respective borders. Her Kan hyung reports. The UK has reported a total of 115 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and its first fatality from the virus. The person was an older patient who had underlying health conditions before testing positive for the virus. In the sense that we're still, Sam, in the, in the contained phase, though now uh, our scientists are, and, and medical advisors are making preparations for the delay phase. And so... Prime Minister Johnson's spokesperson also said it's now highly likely the virus is going to spread in a significant way. The U.S. has also seen a spike in its number of confirmed cases. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other reports, there have been at least 200 confirmed cases in the U.S. Washington state has reported 70 patients and 10 deaths, the biggest figures from a single state so far. California has declared a state of emergency after confirming the state's first coronavirus death. But really, truthfully, it's a whole of America approach. Uh, and this week, uh, President Trump and I and members of our task force have been meeting with industry leaders to ensure that we have all of the resources. Whether... To combat the outbreak, U.S. Congress on Thursday passed an $8.3 billion U.S. dollar emergency spending package. Kanyo, Arirang News.
On top of schools, concerts and other big events either being postponed or outright canceled, a state visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping to Japan has also been put on hold. Government officials from the two countries have confirmed that the Chinese leader's long-awaited visit to Japan will take place at another more appropriate time. The postponement is also raising questions about the Chinese leader's planned trip to South Korea in the first half of the year. South Korea's foreign ministry in a report to President Moon Jae-in this week said the scheduled visit could be impacted if the coronavirus situation is not overcome quickly. An official at Seoul's presidential office, however, said that while it's closely monitoring developments on the outbreak, he said that up until a couple days back, South Korea and China had been fine-tuning the details of President Xi's visit in the first half of the year. In a bid to ease lines at pharmacies or other designated sellers for protective face masks, South Korea says it will begin limiting purchases to two face masks per person each week. And to get them, South Koreans and foreign residents will need their ID cards and health certificates. Now, the checks are to ensure that people cannot abuse the system. Our Kim mo with more. Starting Monday, residents in South Korea will only be allowed to purchase two masks a week from pharmacies. Each person will be allowed to purchase two masks per week from pharmacies. Though this isn't enough, we hope the public will understand that priority should go to those fighting COVID-19 on the front lines. In a briefing on Thursday, Vice Finance Minister Kim yong bum announced that the government will operate what's in effect a mask distribution system by allowing residents to buy only two masks and only on designated days of the week, which will depend on their year of birth. The masks will be sold at some 23,000 pharmacies nationwide that participate in an online system for tracking purchases of medicine. The finance minister also said that 80 percent of the masks manufactured in the nation will be allocated to public sector retailers like the post office, up from the previous 50 percent. Sales of the remaining 20 percent will also be closely monitored so that no single buyer can get more than 10,000 masks without the government's approval. From Friday, there will also be a strict ban on mask exports. Production-wise, the government is aiming to speed up manufacturing from the current 10 million a day to 14 million. It will provide equipment to mask companies so they can make masks faster and it will encourage them to keep production going round the clock by paying higher prices for masks made on the weekend. Regarding shortages of mask material, the country will also ban exports of melt-blown non-woven fabric filters. All producers and sellers of the material will be required to report their production and inventories to the government on a daily basis until the end of June. Violators could face a prison sentence of up to two years or a fine of up to 42,000 U.S. dollars. Kim Mo-kyun, Arirang News. Standard & Poor's has again slashed South Korea's 2020 growth outlook by another half a percentage point to a mere 1.1 percent. Now this is S&P's second such downgrade in just two weeks. And just a couple of weeks ago, S&P's forecast was 2.1 percent. In a report released Thursday, the S&P reasoned a significant drop in people's outdoor activities amid the coronavirus outbreak, eventually leading to a fall in consumer spending. The agency also shaved its growth forecast for the Asia-Pacific region this year. Shifting focus, five European countries have condemned North Korea's recent missile launches at a closed-door UN Security Council meeting. In a joint statement Thursday, Britain, Germany, France, Estonia and Belgium said such provocations risk undermining the prospects for successful negotiations. They also added Pyongyang's actions threaten regional stability and violate UN sanctions. And they also called on North Korea to get back to denuclearization talks with the U.S. The Seoul Metropolitan Government is providing IoT technology to 2,500 elderly people who live alone in the city. Now, the sensors check the health and safety of their citizens with real-time data that tracks their movements and room temperatures. Seoul operated IoT sensors in 5,000 households last year and saved lives in 40 occasions when awkward movements or no movement at all were detected. The capital plans to increase the number of IoT installations to 12,500 households by the year 2022.
Good morning. Many regions had a freezing start to their Friday, and the cold snap will ease this afternoon. And that's going to lead to wide temperature gaps of 10 to even nearly 20 degrees Celsius for some parts of the country. So afternoon temperatures will be a couple notches higher than yesterday in most regions, and the capital will get up to 9 degrees, while the rest of the country will see double-digit afternoon highs. And as for this weekend, rain is in the forecast from tomorrow morning on Jeju, spreading to southern regions by the afternoon. Jeju will see 10 to 20 millimeters of precipitation all through Saturday. However, Sunday will be a sunny and mild one for most regions. In fact, Seoul could have the mildest temperatures of the season so far. Looking ahead, next week we'll have another roller coaster ride in terms of temperatures, so let's all dress accordingly. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world. And that's our time at the Sara on Narirang News. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye. Novel coronaviruses are spreading all over the world. To prevent the virus from spreading further, it's essential to attend to personal hygiene and take prevention.